Earnings quality is extremely important to investors. When they see the earnings of a company, they want to make sure that that is a solid representation of what the company can earn in the future, what it can earn on a sustainable basis. So earnings quality really has to do with this um, search for high quality earnings that are going to accurately represent the ability of a firm to provide returns to stockholders. And there are a couple of definitions associated with this. I mean, first you have to understand accrual basis accounting and the fact that earnings does not necessarily mean a company has positive cash flow. You can, you can measure the aggregate accruals using the net operating assets. And you can further take this to calculating an accruals ratio that can be used to measure the earnings quality. And this accruals ratio uses that net operating assets. There's also a different approach called the cash flow um, statement approach, where it compares the net income to the cash flow from operations plus the cash flow from investing. So that's just a quick overview of the theory behind earnings quality. Let's next take a look at a spreadsheet that pulls data from Capital IQ to actually compute these ratios. You can pull up the spreadsheet, and if you've got the Capital IQ plugin, as you can see up here at the top that I have already installed this, if you have this Capital IQ plugin, it will use the Capital IQ formulas to pull data directly from Capital IQ into your spreadsheet. So um, sometimes you may need to refresh this and you can see that it has a refresh option right here where you can refresh, refresh the entire worksheet or the workbook. Um, so I often have to use that. But I'd like to start off in this tab down here at the bottom on the far right, I'm sorry, the far left, that says the balance sheet method year one. This spreadsheet is programmed to go out to Capital IQ and download the constituents of the mid-cap 400 index, the S&P mid-cap 400 index. And you can see that in cell A7. This formula right here is the CIQ range. You can see that it's using the symbol for the S&P mid-cap 400 index and it's asking for the constituents of that. So what happens is it takes this formula for or this symbol for the index and basically gives you all the constituents. So if I just go to the end of this you can see that what we have is actually 400 of these. Yeah, you can see 400 R's up here. These are 400 firms. All the 400 firms that are currently in the mid-cap 400 index. It's nice because it fills it in with the symbol, the exchange that it trades on. That's in column A. In column B, it's going to give you the company name. The way it's pulling that is this is the IQ identifier for that. And so what you can do is you can use this equal CIQ formula. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the symbol which we've got in A8. You can basically look at um, the identifier in capital IQ, the variable name, and that's what we have in B7 right here. We've got the IQ company name, and it's giving it for today. What is the current one for the fiscal year? It's also got the uh, industry sector that this company is in. In this case, 3D Systems is in the information technology. Now we expand that in road, I'm sorry, column D by figuring out what is the most recent fiscal year end. And for that particular fiscal year end, what we're going to get is the total assets. We'll also get the total cash in column F. We'll get the total liabilities in column G. And we're going to get debt in column H. So if you just go back to um, a couple of minutes ago we talked about the formula for the balance sheet based accruals ratio. In order to compute that we need the net operating assets the NOA and we've just got all the information right here from Capital IQ for that. NOA, NOA equals the total assets minus cash 
minus the total liabilities minus the total debt. In other words, what we're getting is NOA equals net operating assets minus net operating liabilities. Here's the formula right here. It's, it's much better to see it in an Excel spreadsheet than actually hear me talk about it. In order to get this balance sheet accruals ratio, we need NOA for the most recent period, but also for the prior period. So in column J, it's pulling the most recent, not actually it's not the most recent fiscal period, but it's the most, uh, it's the prior fiscal year end. So um, the most recent fiscal year end was 630, 2013. The prior fiscal year end was 630, 2012. So it's going to use this fiscal year end to pull the data that we need to get NOA T minus 1. That would be our total assets. You can see total assets up here. We're going to get the cash. We'll get the total liabilities. And of course from that we're going to subtract total debt in order to get um, the net operating liabilities. So again, we use that formula that we saw earlier to compute the net operating assets for period T minus 1. Now to get the balance sheet accruals based ratio. In order to get that, what we're going to do is in the numerator of that equation, it's NOA for the most recent period minus NOA for the prior period. But what we want to do is divide by the denominator, which consists of the average NOA over those two periods. I know, it's a long speech to get to column Q, which is the balance sheet accruals ratio, which measures earnings quality. The biggest takeaway that I want you all to have is the interpretation of this number. A high accruals ratio indicates poor earnings quality. So there's this negative relationship between this number and the earnings quality. High number for the accruals ratio means that they're using lots of accruals and that's a low earnings quality. Column uh, actually row 8 is actually a good choice here. This is 3D Systems again. 3D Systems has an abnormal one. They have an, uh, a balance sheet accruals based ratio of 0 0.37. Column R actually computes the rank of this. It basically compares it to the other firms in the mid-cap 400 index and the rank for 3D systems is 370. This is pretty bad. This means that um, it is pretty much an outlier in this particular index. It has a very high use of accruals and poor earnings quality. So having 370 is bad. Um, if you put it on a percentile basis, it's at the 7.6 percentile. So one way to think of this is 92% of the firms in the mid cap 100 index have better earnings quality than 3D systems. We're going to put these into quintiles. And this is in particular in quintile 5. The stocks in quintile 5 are going to have high accruals and poor earnings quality. So we want to avoid the stocks in quintile 5. In contrast to that, you've got Adtran, I've never heard of this. This is a firm in the information technology sector. They've got a low number for the balance sheet accruals ratio. Their rank is favorable. Favorable meaning that they have high earnings quality. And if you rank the firms in the mid cap 400 index, they come out to be 22, the 22nd best firm in terms of earning quality. They've got better earnings quality than about 95% of the firms. 
and this puts them in quintile one. We want to choose these stocks that are in quintile one. That, that is our bias. So let's talk about what these other sheets mean. The sheet that we just went through is the balance sheet method for year one. We also have the balance sheet method for year two. And what this does is it's using a different fiscal year in. It starts with T minus one. It uses T minus two as well to compute the NOA for T minus one and T minus two. And this gives us basically this accruals ratio one year back. So let's take a look at it for 3D systems. 3D systems had a high balance sheet based accruals ratio. It's worse than the vast majority of the firms in the mid cap 400 index. 96% basically of the firms in this index have a more favorable earnings quality than 3D systems. It puts it in quintile five, which we want to avoid. And basically, this is the same result we saw from looking at this first worksheet. We can also look at it for year three. It's the same thing. All we're doing is going a little bit farther back in time, one year farther back in time, and computing this balance sheet method. So if I click on the cash flow method, what we're doing is we're taking this list of firms in the mid cap 400 index. We've got the company name, their sector, and then what we're doing is computing the cash flow based accruals ratio. We need a net income for that. From net income, we're going to subtract out the sum of the cash flow from operations and the cash flow from investments. We're going to divide by the average net, uh, net operating assets. And here we go. In column J, we've actually got this cash flow accruals ratio. As, as I mentioned, 3D Systems is not doing well. They're high ranks, low percentile. That means they're in this bad quintile. We put them in the bucket of firms, the 20% of the firms with the worst earnings quality. So I'm going to move to the next tab. All we're doing here is we're going one year back in computing the uh, cash flow based accruals ratio from the prior year. We also do it for year three as well. So we're getting three balance sheet based accruals ratios and we're getting three uh, cash flow accruals ratios. In the composite, we're summing all this up. So this particular worksheet references the balance sheet method for year one, the balance sheet method for year two, the balance sheet method for year three. Those are in columns D, E, and F. Then we've got the cash flow methods in columns G, H, and I. We've got the cash flow method for year one, the cash flow method for year two, and the cash flow method for year three. In column J, we come up with a composite earnings quality measure, and you can see the description right here. How are, we, how are we getting this? Well, let's look at the formula. If it's a financial company, what we're going to do is we're going to use the ratio in D4, and you can see that in the formula right here, meaning that for financial companies, the balance sheet method works far better than the cash flow method. So um, we've got a special approach for those particular firms. Financials are often anomalies when it comes to um, trying to analyze their financial statements. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to average what's in D4 and G4 for 3D systems. And that means we're going to average the balance sheet method for year one in the cash flow method for year one. So this, this gives us the composite EQ score for year one. That's what we have in column J. We can do the same thing for year two and year three. But what we want to do is compare earnings quality for a company to the particular sector it's in because the earnings quality varies tremendously by sector. Some sectors just by the nature of 
the way they do their accounting have relatively poor earnings quality compared to the market. Some have much better. So what we're going to do is come up with what you see in columns P and Q, and that is the sector neutral SN earnings quality score. And we get to this for 3D systems by taking the composite for year one and subtracting off the average for the sector. So 0.32 minus negative 3.1 is going to give us the sector neutral earnings quality score which is shown in column P of 3.42. Now we get to this by a really great formula that's in columns M, N, and O and basically what it's doing here is it's coming up with the average for a particular sector. You'll see that it's actually referencing um, what's in C4 right here and that's the sector information. So an M, N, and O, it's, it's computing the sector average. So I know there's a lot of work, but what we're coming up with is a sector neutral earnings quality score for year one, year two, and year three. So you can see the time period of this. And then what we do is we look at the percentiles associated with this. As we've already noted, 3D systems, which is in row four, is... Um, really uh, has a worst, one of the worst earnings qualities out of this index. It's worse than 98% of the firms for year one, 81% of the firms for year two, and 76% of those for year three. It's in quintile five for year one. For the most recent, uh, the prior period that is, and for two periods ago. It was actually in quintile four. So basically, no matter when you look at it, 3D Systems has a poor earnings quality, a high use of accruals, even if you adjust for the average level in the sector. So this composite worksheet down here is really where you want to go to get some ideas about what stocks to invest in. As part of our investment strategy, we want to choose firms among other things, that have high earnings quality and also wide economic modes. If you want to figure out the earnings quality of these firms, the spreadsheet does it using Capital IQ. Look under the composite worksheet. Under column V, you'll find the most recent sector neutral quintile that these firms are in. So if you want to find firms with high earnings quality, look for those that are in quintile one. Here's a good example. Advent Software, which is also in the information technology sector like 3D systems, it's much different. For the most two recent measurements, it had, um, it was in quintile one and quintile two. This means it had high earnings quality, low use of accruals, these are the firms that has historically outperformed. So I hope that gives you um, a good overview of the spreadsheet and how to use it. It's, it's quick. You need to spend some time looking at the formulas associated with this to understand it. But we want to put this into practice. So we're certainly, uh, we can talk more in class about earnings quality and, and how to identify these firms. But I hope this helps.